Okay, and welcome back. This is Brian's Unpassioned Adventure, and this is the third test of the United States Coast Guard 100 ton captain's license. This is my study guide uh, for deck general. Deck general is the third test I had to take. There are uh, several tests to obtain your captain's license. The first one being the road is the hardest. Uh, it's I believe 150 questions, you can only miss four. So if you haven't studied this one, go back and study the rules of the road and master that test. Then I went through nav general, navigation general. We're on to jet deck general right now. This is the longest uh, section to, that I prepared for. I think it's about 350 questions in this section. Uh, not all of them will be on the test, but uh, I do have a section in here that all of them are on the test. Um, then after that, we have towing and sailing auxiliary and assistance. So um, without any further ado, let's start in on deck general. We'll end the show here. Okay, we're good. We're running still. So this first section is Code of Federal Regulations questions. And um, during the test, there were actual federal regulations in a series of, I believe, eight to 15 books right there in the classroom with me as I was taking the test. So I could go up and I could look in the index for some of these key words and uh, hence look up some of the answers to these questions. So um, let's just get started and you'll see what I mean. Uh, if, if you don't have any CFRs, it might be good to memorize these, but again, these, this is probably where they will change the questions the most um, to see if you know how to look up an index federal code regulation, okay? So we'll go question one, on a small passenger vessel, when must watchmen patrol throughout the vessel to guard against and give alarm in case of fire or other danger? The answer is D, during the nighttime when vessel carries overnight passengers. Question two, life rings must be marked with the B vessel's name. Three, if your vessel is required to have a fire ax on board, where would it be located? The answer is A, in or next to the pilot house operating station. Okay, this is all in the Federal Code of Regulations. Uh, question four, chemical testing is required of all persons involved in A, B, serious marine incident. Five, which of the following is not true concerning the use of work vests on board uninspected vessels? So, uh, the answer is A, they may be substituted for up to 5% of the required life preservers. So I might just go into how I would look something like this up. So which of the following is not true concerning the use of work vest on board inspect, uninspected vessels? So I would say work vest would be the key word here. Um, I would look up and then another whole section of the CFRs is uninspected vessels. So there's inspected vessels and uninspected vessels. And there's also a difference between documented vessels and undocumented vessels. So um, those are the, this would be the, probably the first keyword. And then I would just try and find the answer. Uh, usually there was about three different paragraphs and uh, they would probably all have these other answers and then you would see that it would not be true. This would not be in one of those paragraphs, okay? Several different ways of going about it. Which one, okay, number six, which of the following may not be done without the notification approval of the OCMI? Make major repairs to the hull, machinery or equipment, carry more passengers aboard than stated on the COI, dry deck, dry dock or the vessel for major repairs. The answer is D, any of the above. Again, this uh, section two, th there aren't, this whole deck general is not gonna be about only this section. I think there's only uh, several, okay, those 36 questions on the CFRs. 
So uh, 36 out of 100, 350 questions. Um, you know, you're only going to have a few questions on the test from this section. So, and I believe, just to set your mind at ease, uh, I believe the actual test is only 150 questions and you're allowed to miss up to like 30, 30 to 50 sometimes maybe. So you're allowed to miss at least 30 um, on, out of 150 questions. So that should set your mind at ease. Uh, nobody, typically nobody uh, fails the deck general and nobody fails the navigation of general, or general uh, knowledge. So we'll continue on now that I've set your mind at ease. And just, I guess this whole section is just knowing about how to look up different keywords and, and, and laws. I think that's what they want you to know how to do. Okay, so life preservers shall be stowed so that they will be, this is question number seven, be in various parts of the vessel readily accessible for use. Number eight, motor vessels carrying passengers for hire must carry one of which of these approved life-saving devices for each person aboard on inspected vessels. B, life preservers. Number nine, a small passenger vessel less than 65 feet in length is required to carry how many life ring, ring life buoys? The answer is C, one. It's less than 65 feet. Okay, number 10, in addition to the required life jackets, the number of children's life jackets carried on board must be at least what percentage of the total persons permitted to be carried? Answer is C, 10%. Question 11, pyrotechnic distress signals are not required on vessels operating on short runs. A short run is limited to D, about 30 minutes away from the dock. 12, vessels operating on runs of more than 30 minutes shall carry in the pilot house or other suitable location. D, six red hand flare distress signals and six orange hand smoke distress. Answer uh, question 13, which of the following vessels is required to carry an emergency position indicating radio, beacon, and EPRIV on board? Answer C, a vessel on a coastwise route. 14, on an in inspected vessel, the length of a line which is required to be attached to a life ring buoy must be at least B, 60 feet. I'm reading that incorrectly. A ring type life buoy. 15, a 50 foot vessel is required to be fitted with at least B, is the answer one ring life buoy and one water light attached 16 when a vessel is underway it shall be under the direction or control of d the master or licensed mate only 17 which of the following equipment is required for a life float answers a paddles water light and painter Number 18, life floats and buoyant apparatus shall be marked with the vessel's name, with the number of persons allowed, with the vessel's name on all paddles. Answer is D, all of the above. 19, the master shall notify the OCMI under which of the following circumstances, accidental or in intentional grounding, Damage in excess of $25,000. A crewman sprains their ankle. The answer is D, all of the above. 20, you are in port A in the United States and your certificate of inspection has insp expired. You wish to go to port B in the United States for repairs and complete the inspection. If the officer in charge marine inspection deems it safe, he may issue a Answer is D, permit to proceed. 21, shutoff valves must be installed on fuel supply lines. D, at the tank end and engine end of the fuel lines. 22, while serving as master on board an inspected vessel, your license must be C, 
in your possession on board the vessel. 23, the Coast Guard determines the number of passengers permitted by applying D, a combination of the above may be used. Length of rail criteria only, deck area criteria, or also fixed seating criteria. So they can do a combination of the, any of the above. 24, on small passenger vessels, a coastwise route is one that is A, not more than 20 miles from shore. 25, if it is impractical to use the fill pipe to sound the fuel tank, then the tank should be fitted with A, separated sounding tube or an installed marine type fuel gauge. 26, a 30 foot uninspected vessel carrying six or less passengers for hire and operating on the high seas is not required to carry D, an e prib. 27, aboard a 60 foot long small passenger vessel other than a ferry that is certified to carry 33 persons, the minimum capacity required per powered bilge pump is D, I'm sorry, A is the answer, 10 gallons per minute. Minimum capacity required per powered bilge pump needs to have 10 gallons per minute. 28, the master of a small passenger vessel must conduct sufficient drills and give sufficient instruction as necessary. D, to ensure that all crew members are familiar with their duties during emergencies. Number 29, as appropriate for the voyage, all vessels inspected and uninspected must carry adequate and up-to-date charts, coast pilots, light lists, D, all of the above. 30, a certificate of inspection for vessels not more than 65 feet in length and of less than 100 gross tons carrying more than six passengers will be issued for a period of D, three years. 31, the vessel's steering gear, signaling whistle, controls, and communication systems shall be tested by the operator B, before getting underway for the day's operation. 32, whenever practicable, the certificate of inspection must be posted D in a conspicuous place where it will most likely be observed by the passengers. 33, each vessel shall be dry docked or hauled out at intervals not to exceed two years if operated in salt water for a total of more than A, three months in the one year period since it was last hauled out. 34, a vessel is operating in warm water on a route restricted to 20 miles, limited coastwise, from a harbor of safe refuge. What is the percentage of life floats required? The answer is B, 50% of all persons on board. 35, ring buoys are required on what size vessel? Uninspected vessels regulation. Answers D, 26 feet and over. 36, how many escape routes must normally exist from all general areas accessible to the passengers or where the crew may be quartered or normally employed? The answer is two, two escape routes. So here are the uh, answers for the Code of Federal Regulations answers. I'll let you take a look at that. Pause the video if you like. Okay, moving on. I think this is the regulation, that it, the section regulation that it's under, okay? Okay, next section, deck seamanship. Diagrams are located on pages 62 and 63. I think I have uh, these diagrams right here. Okay, so let's start. Number one, a pelican hook. 
A can be released under strain, while under strain. Number two, the not H in illustration, in the illustration D30G. This is the illustration D30G, DG. We're looking at H, let's see, H. H, this is H. The not H in illustration 30DG is A, C, Beckett Bend. The not T in illustration D30DG, it says T right here. Answer is B, a French bowling. I'm going to do a, a split screen, I think, here. There we go. Okay. Uh, so, four, you can safely step in the bite of a line. D, never. Never step in a bite of a line. Five, not X. X is right down here. In illustration 30 DG is a clove hitch. C, it's a clove hitch. Number seven, laying out a line in successive circles flat on deck with the bitter end in the center is known as C, flemishing. Eight, not F in the illustration 30 DG. That's F right there. Closer. This is D, round turn and two half hitches. Nine, the not I in illustration 30 DG is A, bowline on a bite. Ten, faking a line means to A, arrange it on deck in long bites. Eleven, a chalk is A. The answer is B, deck fitting used as a fair lead. That's what a chalk is. Okay, number 12, which line has no snapback due to elasticity? The answer is A, Kevlar. Number 13, new reel of, a new reel of nylon line should be opened by D, unreeling from a spool by pulling from the bottom of the reel when suspended horizontally above the deck. 14, the size of line is normally indicated by its B, circumference. 15, a natural fiber rope can be ruined by dampness because of A, rotting. 16, right laid line should be co coiled C, clockwise. I think we're over those knots situation. 17, the knot M, I guess I wasn't. <laughs> the knot M in illustration 30DG. Let's see if I M. There's M. What knot is this? This is a D, Carrick bend. 18, the knot Q in illustration 30DG. Q. is a bowline, D, bowline. 19, wire rope is classified by A, the number of strands and number of wires per strand. I'm gonna open this up. 20, a rope ladder with wooden rungs is called a C, Jacob's ladder. 21, a metal object on deck made to receive mooring lines is a B, bollard. 22, a hook that will release quickly is a D, pelican hook. 23, the lay of line refers to B, the direction or twist in the strands. 24, a stopper is A, a short length of line used for temporary holding 
another line. 25, the strongest of the natural fibers is C, manila. 26, when natural fiber rope gets wet, the B line shrinks in length. 27, which of the following lines has the greatest amount of stretch? Assume the diameters are equal. Answer is B, nylon. 28, chafing gear is normally used D on mooring lines. 29, mousing a shackle with small wire. C, prevents the pin from backing out on out of the shackle. 30. A monkey fist is B. An ornamental knot tied at the end of a heaving line to assist throwing. 31. Which is the most dangerous position during line hand handling operations? Let's uh, get the diagram up. Okay, this is a diagram. And what was the question again? Which is the p most dangerous position during the line handling operations illustration 19 DG? One, two, three, or four? The answer is one. That's the most dangerous position. 32, a FID is a B, tapered wooden pin used when splicing natural and synthetic line. 33, the best way to attach a line to a cleat is A, wrap around the base of the cleat, then a figure eight. 33, dipping the eye, C, allows either line to be removed easily. 35, the knot W in illustration 30 DG. Let's go back to W. There's W. The knot W in 30 DG is a D square knot. It's a square knot. All right, 36, a whipping on a nylon line a keeps the ends from fraying. 37. Which of the following types of line would have the least resistance to mildew and rot? Answer is A. Manila. 38. Which of the lines listed has the least amount of elasticity? Answer is A. Kevlar. 39, which factor is most likely to impair the strength and durability of polypropylene line? The answer is C, sunlight. Sunlight causes a lot of damage. 40, the quality that makes nylon line dangerous is that it D, stretches. Nylon's the most elastic. elastic. 41, the critical point in nylon line elongation is considered to be D, 50%. 42, which of the following lines would be at least likely to kink? Answers A, braided line. 43, which line is the greatest ability to float? Answers D, polypropylene, plastic. 44, Compared to Kevlar line, size for size, nylon line, B has more stretch than Kevlar line. Those are two exact opposites. Kevlar is the least elastic, nylon is the most elastic. 45, a pair of metal posts to which mooring or tow lines are made fast is a C, bit. 46, you need to make a temporary eye at the end of a line in order to use the line as a mooring line. What knot should you use? The answer is B, Bolin. I think we have it up here. Bolin, there it is. 
Uh, 47, the puncture of a chalk on a vessel with a solid bulwarks is to D, provide openings through the bulwarks for mooring lines. Okay, that's the end of that section. And these are the answers for deck seamanship. You can pause and uh, copy those answers down. By the way, I have all of these, uh, this whole PDF without the answers, so you can practice taking a test. Just uh, con feel free to contact me, and I can get those over to you, help, help get these to you. Okay, the next section, um, I forget what this section is called, but these are answer, these are questions that may be on the test. What, number one, what is normally used to pass a mooring line to a dock or wharf? Answer C, heaving line. Let me see if I... Okay, these are called boat handling and mooring. Okay, this is boat handling and mooring. Number two, to ease a line means to... C, pay out more line to remove most of the tension. Question three, avast means... A, to stop. Four, belay a line means... D, to secure it to a cleat. Five, when underway and proceeding ahead, as the speed increases, the pivot point tends to B, move forward. C, I'm sorry, D, number six, chafing gear is normally used D on mooring lines. Seven, the helm command shift the rudder means a, put the rudder to the opposite side, the same number of degrees it is now. Number eight, right hard rudder means, A, put the rudder all the way over to the right. Nine, ease the rudder means to, C, decrease the rudder angle. 10, which of the following Terms describes the theoretical distance in feet that a boat moves forward with each revolution of its propeller. Answer C, pitch. The, the 11, your sing, single screw boat with a right-handed propeller is dead in the water. When you reverse your engine with your rudder amidships, you would expect the boat to A, kick its to stern to port. Kick its stern to port. Okay, number 12. When a vessel with a single right-hand propeller backs to port, the A, bow falls off to starboard. Some of these you really have to think about, so uh, read the question and actually picture it in your mind. Okay, 13, when backing down with sternway, the pivot point of a vessel is about C, one-third of the vessel's length from the stern. 14, a vessel is equipped with two pro twin propellers with both screws going ahead. If there is no wind or current, and the rudder is amidships, which of the following will happen? The answer is D, the vessel will steer a fairly straight course. 15, the rudder is amidships and both screws going ahead. What will happen if the starboard screw is stopped? The answer is B, the bow will go to starboard. 16, a twin screw vessel can clear the inboard propeller and maneuver off a pier best by answers D, holding an after bow spring line and going slow ahead on the outboard engine. 17. You are going ahead on twin engines when you want to make a quick turn to starboard. What action will turn the boat quickest? Answers C, reverse starboard engines, apply right rudder. 
Okay, it's still running. 18, you are backing on twin engines with rudder amidships. When your starboard engine stalls, in order to continue backing on course, you should A, apply left rudder. 19, you are on single screw vessel with a left-handed propeller making no way in the water. How will your vessel react when you apply right rudder? Answer C, rudder alone has no effect on the vessel. 20, with rudder amidships in negligible wind, a twin screw vessel moving astern with both engines backing will back C in a fairly straight line. 21, you are landing on a, you're landing a single screw vessel with a right-handed propeller, starboard side to a dock. As you approach the dock, you come ahead on your engine with your rudder amidships. You would expect your vessel to C, turn its stern towards the dock. 22, you are going ahead on twin engines with rudder amidships when your starboard engine stalls. If you desire to continue your course, you should A, apply left rudder. 23, a twin screw boat that is going ahead on the starboard screw only tends to B, veer to port. 24, the best way to steer a twin screw vessel if you lost your rudder is by using D, one engine running at reduced speed and controlling the boat with the other. 25, you notice that your speed has decreased, the stern of your vessel has settled more into the water, and your rudder is sluggish in responding. What is the most likely cause for this? The answer is B, shallow water. 26, you are on a single screw vessel with a right-handed propeller, and you are making headway. When you come upon shallow water, C, your rudder response will become sluggish. 27. Two vessels are abreast of each other and passing port to part, port in a confined waterway. What would you expect as you approach the screws of the other vessel? C, your stern would shear towards the other vessel. Eight, 28. On a single screw vessel, when coming port side to a pier and being set off the pier, you should answer C. Make your approach at a greater angle than, clean, than calm weather. Make your approach at a greater angle than in calm weather. 29. Your vessel is to dock bow in to a slip. Which line would be most useful? The answer is A, your after, bound, your after bow spring line. 30, you are 15 feet off a pier and docking a vessel using only a bow and stern line. Once the slack is out of both lines, you begin to haul in on the bow line. What is the effect on the vessel? The answer is C, the, boat, the bow and stern will both come in. 31, your vessel is moored starboard side next to a pier with a spring line led aft from the bow. With no other force acting on the vessel, putting the engines ahead should bring A, the bow in and the stern out. 32, you are proceeding in heavy weather and you have your bow meeting the seas. To prevent pounding, you should B, decrease speed. 33, when making way in heavy seas, you notice that your vessel's screw is being lifted clear out of the water and racing. One way to correct this would be to B, decrease speed. 
with a following 34 a, with a following C a vessel will tend to D yaw go back and forth 35 on a vessel running before a heavy C moving weight aft will affect the handling of the vessel by C reducing the yawing 36 when a boat turns broadside to heavy seas and winds, it exposes the boat to the danger of A, broaching. 37. When a vessel is swinging from side to side off course due to quartering seas, the vessel is D, yawing. 38. The term lee side refers to the B, side of the vessel sheltered from the wind. 39, a vessel trimmed by the stern has, answers B, drag. 40, if your vessel is broken down and rolling in heavy seas, you can reduce the possibility of capsizing by A, rigging a sea anchor. Okay, that was boat handling and mooring. Let's see if we can zoom out so you can get all of these answers here. You can pause the video. And that was boat handling and mooring answers. Okay, on to the next section. This is anchoring questions. Okay. Anchoring questions. So we're on page 11 of 29. Anchoring questions. Let's get in. Question one, if you pay out more anchor line, you C, increase the holding power of your anchor. Two, one method of determining if a vessel is dragging anchor is to note B, changes to bearings of fixed objects on shore. Number three, the best method to stop a vessel which is dragging anchor in a sand bottom is to B, pay out more line. Four, generally speaking, the most favorable bottom for anchoring is C, a mixture of mud and gravel. Five, the holding capabilities of an anchor can be determined by the A, anchor's ability to bury itself in the sea bottom. Six, what is lifting the anchor from the bottom called? Answers D, weighing anchor. Seven, what does veering the anchor line mean? Answers D, paying out more chain or line. Number eight, in a strong wind and current, what should be the length of chain with a single anchor? The answer is C, 10 times the depth of the water. That's in a strong wind and current. What should be the length of the chain <laughs> with a single anchor? The answer is 10 times the depth of water. Please remember that. <laughs> so many uh, ships get uh, beached because of that. People don't know that. Okay, number nine. To safely anchor a vessel, there must be sufficient scope in the anchor line. Scope is the ratio of, answers A, the length of road, to the depth of water. Length of road to the depth of water, okay? Number 10, using a scope of five to one, determine how much anchor line would have to be used in order to anchor in 30 feet of water. Okay, it's just 30 times five, 150 feet is D. While, 11, while anchoring your vessel, the best time to let go of the anchor is when your vessel is B, moving slowly astern. That way it doesn't get caught in the prop. Number 12, which of the following types of bottom is best suited for holding an anchor of small boat? Answers A, mud and sand. Number 13, when at anchor, if possible, a vessel's position should be plotted by bearings B, of fixed known objects on shore. Look at the objects on shore. 14, what would be considered parts of the ground 
tackle. An anchor, a windlass, a chain. The answer is D, all of the above. 15, what type of link is generally used to connect lengths of anchor chain? The answer is C, detachable. Number 16, an emergency sea anchor may be constructed by using a bucket, a cooler, an oar and canvas weighted down. The answer is D, any of the above. Okay, there's the anchoring answers. Answers to the anchoring questions. Now we're on to the safety questions. All of these questions are on the test. Again, these are the safety questions. All of these questions are on the test. All of these questions are on the test. You have to provide the answer. Okay, number one, fuel tanks should not be topped off because A, you are not allowing for expansion due to an increase in temperature. Number two, static electricity may be built up by the spraying of petroleum, the splashing of petroleum in tanks, the flow of petroleum through pipes. Answer is D, any of the above. Number three, if passengers are on board on an overnight voyage and an abandoned ship drill is carried out, they should A, take part. Four, U.S. documented vessels have the same, have the, I'm sorry, the U.S. documented vessels have the name and home port. The answer C, name required to be marked on both bows and stern and the home port marked on the stern. It's U.S. documented vessels. Five, your vessel has completed an inspection for certification and has issued a temporary certificate. This certificate, the answer is B, has full force of a regular certificate of inspection. Six, which of the following documents shows details of the vessel, routes, manning, and safety equipment required? Answer C, certificate of inspection. Number seven, the life-saving equipment on all vessels shall be D, readily accessible or available. Number eight, what chemical is used to treat water in order to ensure its safety for drinking? Answer is B, chlorine. Number nine, while fueling a gasoline-propelled vessel, all hatches, doors, and gangway gates should be closed to prevent spilled gas from entering the vessel, prevent fumes from entering the vessel, keep passengers off the vessel. The answer is D, all of the above. Number 10, dark smoke from the exhaust of a diesel engine is a sign of B, poor combustion, leaking injectors. 11, what prevents water from entering the vessel at the location where the shaft or rudder post passes through the hull? The answer is A, the stuffing box. Number 12, when refueling, make certain that C, the fuel nozzle is touching the side of the fill tube. The fuel nozzle is touching the side of the fill tube. Okay. 13, why do exhaust ventilation ducts in the engine room extend to the lowest part of the bilge? The answer is D, to remove heavier than air gases. 14, after fueling with gasoline, you should C, run blowers to ventilate bilges before starting the engine. 15, your engine temperature rises. It could be caused by a malfunctioning water pump, a plugged water inlet, a low lube oil level. The answer is D, all of the above. 16, the normal way to stop a diesel engine is to B, use the stop switch for shutting the engine down. There is a solenoid on the diesel fuel pump. 
It cuts the fuel off when you engage the stop switch. 17, the best way to stop a runaway diesel engine is to C, cut off the air supply. I like to do this by doing a choke, pull the choke. But cut off the air supply. That's the best way to stop a runaway diesel engine. 18, in a diesel engine, the air fuel, fuel air mixture is ignited by A, heat of compression. 19, where should shutoff valves be installed on fuel lines? Answers B, the tank and engine, at the tank and engine. 20, diesel fuel has safety advantage over gasoline because diesel fuel is A, less likely to explode due to a higher flash point. 21, when writing the log book at the end of your watch, you make an error in writing an entry. What is the proper means of correcting this error? The, error, the answer is B, cross out the error with a single line and write the correct entry, then initial and date the correction. 22, to prevent explosion from backfires on board, inboard gasoline engines are equipped with B, a backfire flame arrestor. 23, the carburetor is placed on the engine to D, mix the fuel and air. 24, which of the following exhaust systems should be carefully inspected at regular intervals? The engine, the galley, the heater? The answer is D, all of the above. 25, what device must be affixed to the carburetor with a metal-to-metal -metal contact? The answer is C, the U.S. Coast Guard approved backfire flame arrestor. 26, your gasoline engine turns, cranks over, but will not start. You should first check A, your fuel level. 27, your gasoline engine turns, cranks over, but will not start. You remove the number one spark plug. Number one plug is wet with gasoline. This is an indication you have B, flooded the engine with gasoline. 28, you turn the ignition switch on and depress the starter button and the starter just clicks. This indicates you have C, your battery is too weak to turn over the engine. 29, the purpose of fuses in electrical wiring is to A, protect the circuit by interrupting the overload. 30, small passenger vessels with gasoline engines must be fitted with an oil presser gauge, a backfire flame arrestor, jacket water discharge temperature gauges. A, I'm sorry, the answer is D, all of the above. 31, fuel tanks should not be topped off when loading on a cold day because A, subsequent temperature rise will cause the fuel to overflow. That, I think was the very first question here. Yeah. So these are the safety questions. All of these questions are going to be on the test. Okay. Guaranteed. All of these questions are going to be on the test. Those are your answers. And let's move on to the next section. Drills and emergency questions. Let's see, here we're still going. Number one, you are picking up a person who has fallen overboard. The best way to keep your vessel under control while approaching the victim is to approach. A, from the leeward of the person. Number two, when conducting helicopter operations, you should not touch the basket until it touches the deck, not secure the hoist cable to the vessel, secure all loose gear. The answer is D, all of the above. 
Three, when evacuating a seaman by helicopter lift, the vessel should be C, underway with the wind on the port bow. The wind on the port bow. Four, when evacuating a seaman by helicopter lift, what is the best radio channel to establish communications with the helicopter? The answer is C, channel 16, emergency. Five, the one turn Anderson method of returning to a man overboard should be used only if B, the vessel is very maneuverable. Learn what the Anderson method is. Six, while underway in a thick fog, you are on watch and hear a, the cry, man overboard. What type of maneuver should you make? Answer is A, Williamson turn. Number seven, you are standing the, the wheel watch when you hear the cry, man overboard, starboard side. You should be ready to A, give full right rudder. Number eight, a lookout should, should report objects sighted using D, relative bearings. Number nine, helicopter hoist procedures can be found in what publication? Answer B, Coast Pilot. Coast Pilot. 10, the master of a small passenger vessel must conduct sufficient drills and give sufficient instruction as necessary. D, to ensure that all crew members are familiar with their duties during emergencies. It's just any time. They, they try to trick you uh, to try and memorize it a, a time period, but it's any time to ensure that all crew members are familiar with their duties during emergency. Number 11, passenger safety orientation should include emergency exits, survival craft embarkation areas, ring life buoy locations. The answer is D, all of the above. 12, the station bill shall be posted. A, be posted at the operating station and in a conspicuous location in each crew accommodation space. 13, drills are mandatory for all hands, embarked passengers for orientation in abandoned ship, the master only. The answer is both A and B. So the answer is D, both A and B. A and B reads all hands. Drills are mandatory for all hands and drills are mandatory for embarked passengers for orientation and abandoned ship, okay? 14, a float plan is C, written statements as by the master of the details of an intended voyage. 15, you witness a man overboard. Your first actions are B, call out for assistance and throw a life ring into the water. Let's see, we're on 16. The person in charge of the vessel must prepare and post which of the following at the operating station. Answers A, emergency instructions. 17, a type one offshore jacket will D, turn most unconscious person's face up. Okay, so there's the answers for D, drill and emergency answers. I'm sorry, there's the answers for drills and emergency questions. Okay, and we'll move on to the next section. Life raft questions, so we're on 18 to 29. We have 10 more of these pages to go. Life raft questions. Number one, life rafts are less maneuverable than lifeboats due to their lightweight, shallow draft, large sail area. The answer is D, all of the above. Two, an inflatable life raft is overturned. It may be righted by A, standing on the inflating cylinder and pulling on the straps on the underside of the raft. 
Three, you have abandoned ship and are in an inflatable raft that has just inflated. You hear a continuous hissing coming from the fitting in a buoyancy tube. What is the cause of this? The answer is C. Excess inflation pressure is bleeding off and should soon stop. Four, if more than one raft is manned after the vessel has sunk, the answer is D. Tie the rafts together and try to stay in a single group. Five, which procedures will help to survive an extended stay in warm water in a raft? Which procedures will help to survive an extended stay in warm water in a raft? Wetting clothes during the day to decrease perspiration. Get plenty of rest. Keep the entrance curtains open. The answer is D, all of the above. Six, if you reach shore in a life raft, the first thing to do is A, drag the raft ashore and lash it down for a shelter. Seven, if you are at sea an inflatable life raft in cold temperatures, the greatest danger is B, lack of heat due to the cold temperatures. Eight, while adrift in an inflatable life raft in hot tropical weather, C, inflating the floor panels may help to cool personnel. Nine, which statement is true concerning an inflatable life raft? The floor may be inflated for insulation from cold water. B, crew members can jump into the raft without damaging it. The raft may be boarded before it is fully inflated. The answer is D, all of the above. 10, the purpose of the tripping line on a sea anchor is to C, aid its recovery. 11, a sea anchor is B, a cone-shaped bag used to slow down the wind drift effect on a raft or a boat. 12, inflatable life rafts are provided with a jackknife, towing attachment, lifeline. D, all of the above. 13. After launching, an inflatable life raft should be kept dry inside by B. Using the balers and sponges. 14. After a life raft is launched, the operating cord A. Serves as a, a C painter. 15. Inflatable life rafts are provided with D, an electric torch, a.k.a. flashlight. 16. The painter of the inflatable life raft has a length of B, 33 feet plus the stowage height, or 49 feet, whichever is greater. 17. The purpose of the four pockets located on the underside at each corner of the raft is to B. Act as stabilizers by filling with seawater as soon as the raft is inflated and in an upright position. 18. The operating cord on an inflatable life raft should be renewed by D. An approved servicing facility ashore. 19. A lifeline must be connected to the life raft C, with bites long enough to touch the water. 20, the interior color of the canopy of an inflatable life raft in domestic service. C, may be of any color. 21, in, the inside light of an inflatable life raft is turned on. A, automatically as the life raft inflates. 22. Prior to the ship sailing, the operating cord on each inflatable life raft should be A. Made fast to the vessel per manufacturer's instruction. 
23, handholds or straps on the underside of an inflatable life raft are provided. C, to right the raft if it capsizes. 24, a hydrostatic release mechanism for a life raft. D, must be submerged to a certain depth to release automatically. 25, a feature on inflatable life rafts is that D, it has water stabilizing pockets. 26, if you are forced to abandon ship in a life raft, your course of action should be to A, remain in the immediate vicinity. 27, the, inflatable, the inflated life raft is kept from being pulled under as vessels sink beyond the length of the painter by the D, weak link. 28, what is the purpose of the hydrostatic release? The answer is A, to release raft from the cradle automatically as the ship sinks. 29, an inflatable life raft can be launched by C, throwing the entire container overboard, then pulling the operating cord to inflate the raft. 30, the design and performance of the canopy of a life raft in domestic service is furled so it B, may be set in place by the occupants after the raft have been inflated. 31. If the hydrostatic release mechanism for an inflatable life raft is not periodically serviced and becomes inoperative, it will fail to C. Free the life raft from the vessel if the vessel sinks. 32. A vessel sinks to a depth of 15 feet. The hydrostatic trip releases the life raft container from its cradle by B, releasing the tie-down strap. 33, what is installed on the underside of an inflatable life raft to help prevent it from being skidded by the wind or overturned? Answers A, ballast bags. 34, the most important thing to remember when launching an inflatable life raft by hand is to C, secure the operating cord to the vessel. 35, the air spaces in the floor of an inflatable life raft will provide protection against D, cold water temperatures. 36, puncture leaks in the, water, in the lower tubes or bottom of the inflatable life raft should first be stopped by using A, conical plugs. 37, to launch a life raft by hand, you should D, throw the life raft over the side and pull the operating cord. 38, life, the inflatable life rafts in domestic service must be able to carry A, not less than four. I take it that's people. 39, an inflatable life raft is, handed, is hand launched by D, throwing the entire container overboard. 40. In each inflatable raft, what piece of equipment is provided to make quick temporary emergency repairs to cut or rip a raft? The answer is C. Various size repair clamps. 41. Required devices provided for signaling on inflatable life rafts include C. Handheld flares. 42. Tube patches are provided in life rafts for B, permanent repairs. 43, the capacity of any life raft on board a vessel can be determined by B, examining the plate on the outside of the life raft of the raft container. 44, who should inspect and test the inflatable life raft? Answer is B, the manufacturer or authorized representative. 45. Generally, which of the following is used to inflate life rafts? 
Answer is A, CO2, carbon dioxide. 46, which signaling devices are required on the life rafts in ocean service, S-O-L-A-S? Answer is B, rocket parachute flares. 47, what information would you find in chapter, subchapter Q? Answer is A, specifications for life-saving equipment. 48. Inflatable life rafts on vessels on an international voyage must be able to carry D, six persons. 49. Inflatable life rafts on vessels on a domestic voyage must be able to carry C, four persons. 50. The weight of an inflatable life raft in a rigid container shall not exceed D, 407.8 pounds. 51, the weight of an inflatable raft in a fabric container shall not exceed B, 220 pounds. 52, the required equipment differs between a life raft in a coastal service from that of a solace equipped raft in what manner? The signaling equipment, the food rations, the repair outfit. The answer is D, all of the above. 53, in which subchapter would you find the required equipment for an inflatable life raft in either domestic or solace service? The answer is B, subchapter Q in 156 to 165. 54, category A, e pribs transmit on frequencies that are monitored by orbiting satellites, private, commercial, and military aircraft. The answer is D, both A and C, both of those. 55, the labeling and marking of the service use of pyrotechnic distress signals shall be limited to a period of how many months from the date of manufacture? The answer is C, 42 months. 56, the licensed operator of a vessel shall make sure the EPRIB is tested. The answer is D, monthly. 57, after launching an inflatable raft, water is removed by D, using balers and sponges. I think we had this one already. 58, an emergency sea anchor for a life raft may be constructed by using a boat bucket, an air tank filled with water, an oar and canvas weighted down. Answer is D, any of the above. Okay, here are the answers to life raft section. I think some of these are actual federal code. Okay, some of these are actual federal code. You can pause the video and I'll move on to the next one okay firefighting questions Let's verify we're still on here firefighting questions okay. I'm gonna pause really quick actually I think okay Firefighting questions. One, which extinguishing agent is most effective on a mattress fire? The answer is D, water. Two, which of the following types is of extinguishing agent is designed for use on flammable liquid fires? The answer is B, foam. Three, portable foam fire extinguishers are designed for use on, the answer is A, class A and class B fires. Four, a straight stream of water is most effective against fires of class, answers A, class A fires. Five, when approaching a fire, you should shield firefighters from the fire by using, answer C, water fog. Six, which, of the, which extinguishing agent is the best for use on electrical fires? 
The answer is B, CO2, carbon dioxide. Seven, what is the most important consideration when determining how to fight an electrical fire? The answer is B, danger of shock to personnel. Number eight, the most effective way of applying carbon dioxide from a portable extinguisher to a fire is by B, directing the gas at the base of the flames in a slow sweeping motion. Number nine, any extinguishing agent used on a class C fire must have what important property? Answer is D, non-conductivity. Class C is an electrical fire. 10, an important step in fighting any electrical fire is to C, de-energize the circuit. 11, the first action which should be taken in event of fire on your vessel is to B, sound the alarm. 12. Dry chemical fire extinguishers would be effective for which type of fire? Burning oil, electrical, paint fire, all and the answer is D, all of the above. 13. You have a fire in the engine room and you sound the alarm. Your next action should be B. Secure the fuel supply and ventilation to the engine room. 14. A fire in an electrical panel is a class blank fire. The answer is C. Class C fire. 15. Which portable extinguishing agent should be protected from cold temperature? The answer is A. Foam. 16. It is necessary to secure the forced ventilation to a compartment where there is a fire to... C. Prevent additional oxygen from reaching the fire. 17. The most effective cooling agent among those normally used to fight fire is A. Water fog. 18. A fire can spread by conduction, convection, radiation. The answer is D. All of the above. 19. Where fire hoses are stowed on open decks, and provided no protection, the hoses D may temporarily be may be temporarily removed during heavy weather. Twenty. What are the most important reasons for using water fog to fight fires? Answers B. Cools fire in adjacent surfaces, provides protective barrier. Twenty one. CO2, carbon dioxide, extinguishes a fire by B, displacing oxygen. 22, foam extinguishes a fire by A, smothering the burning material. 23, the minimum type B-3 CO2 extinguisher would have a related capacity of blank for uninspected vessel regulation. The answer is C, 35 pounds. 24, what does the B on a B-2 fire extinguisher refer for uninspected vessel regulation? The answer is D, that's the class of fire that extinguisher should be used on. So B type extinguisher should be used on a B class fire. 25. Which of the following fixed fire extinguishing systems is approved for the use on board inspected, uninspected vessels? The answer is A. Carbon dioxide type. 26. How many fire extinguishers are required on a 28-foot uninspected motorboat with no fixed extinguishing system? The answer is B. 2B1. 27. The lowest temperature at which a liquid will give off sufficient vapors to form a flammable mixture with air is known as the B flash point. 28. What type of fire extinguishers are permitted on inspected vessels? Foam, carbon dioxide, dry chemical, 
The answer is D, all of the above. 29, which of the following is an advantage of water fog over a straight stream of water in a fire, fighting an oil fire? It has a smothering effect on the fire. It removes combustible vapors from the air. It gives more protection to fire fighting personnel. The answer is D, all of the above. 30, when heat is transferred through coal, comes through solid material, the process is called B, conduction. 31, the best extinguishing agent for class D fire is D, dry powder. 32, a carbon dioxide fire extinguisher is required to be recharged if the weight loss exceeds what percentage of the weight of the charge? The answer is D, 10%. 33, Halon extinguishes a fire by C, breaking the chain reaction. That's Halon. 34, annually all carbon dioxide fire extinguishers aboard a vessel are, answers D, weighed. 35, on vessels that are required to have fixed carbon dioxide fire extinguishing systems, the controls to operate the system shall be installed in an accessible location. A is the answer, outside the space protected. 36, fixed fire extinguishing systems aboard uninspected vessels. Answers A shall be the carbon dioxide type. 37, what would be an example of a B1 extinguisher? The answer is C, a two pound dry chemical. 38, how many portable fire extinguishers are required just outside the propulsion machinery space of a diesel powered vessel? The answer is C, one B2 fire extinguisher. 39, how many portable fire extinguishers required in the operating station of a small passenger vessel? The answer is B, either one B1 extinguisher or one C1 is required. 40, the number of fire extinguishers required on uninspected motor vessels in the machinery space is based on the vessels B, gross tonnage and brake horsepower. Okay, so these are the answers for firefighting questions. I'll let you pause. I think these are, some of these are federal code here. So I'll let you pause and copy those answers. And the next section, I believe, Next section is pollution questions. So we have pollution questions, then we have stability questions, and that's it. So pollution questions and instability questions. Okay. So let's get started on this. Pouring myself some water here. Mm. Pollution questions. Most likely time for an oil pollution. While fueling is when A, final topping off is occurring. Two, question two, pollution is of the waterways may result from the discharge of untreated sewage, galley trash, oily wastes. The answer is D, all of the above. Question three, which statement is true of a gasoline spill? Answers A, it is visible for a shorter time than a fuel oil spill. Number four, most minor spills of oil products are caused by B, human error. Number five, which of the following statements concerning an accidental oil spill in the navigable waters of the United States is true? Answers D, the person in charge must report the spill to the Coast Guard. Six, the master of an ocean-going 
ship of 40 feet or greater shall record the discharge of garbage at sea. The record shall include the date and time, the latitude and longitude, cubic meters of discharge. The answer is D, all of the above. Seven, the pollution prevention regulations contained in the Federal Water Pollution Control Act are applicable on which of the following waters? The answer is A, navigable waters, adjoining shores, lines, and contiguous zone of the United States. Contiguous zone of the United States. Number eight, which substance is not considered oil as defined for pollution prevention regulations? The answer is C, oil mixed with dredge spoil. It's not considered oil. Number nine, when a vessel violates the Federal Oil Pollution Act, who may be held responsible? The answer is D, any individual connected with the vessel involved in the operation. 10, what is the maximum fine for discharging oil in U.S. waters? The answer is C, $5,000. 11. Which method of oil cleanup is usually not allowed? The answer is C. Seeking the agents and disbursement. 12. The term discharge as it appears to the pollution regulations means spilling, leaking, pumping. The answer is D. Any of the above. 13. Which of the following listed oils is not suitable for storm oil? The answer is C. Mineral oil. 14. Machinery tube oil is not permitted to be drained into the bilges of D. Any vessel in the United States. Any United States vessel. Machinery lube oil is not permitted to be drained into the bilges of any United States vessel. 15. When more than 12 miles from shore, the oil discharge mixture content B must be less than 15 parts per million. 16. Which of the following vessels is not required to have a pollution placard posted on board? The answer is A, a 15-foot passenger vessel. I believe the cutoff is uh, 40 feet. I could be wrong. It could be 25 feet. 17, the placard entitled Discharge of Oil Prohibited. C, must be located at the bilge pump control station. 18, small oil spills on deck can be kept from going overboard by... C, plugging the scuppers. 19, as soon as the officer in charge of the vessel has taken steps to stop the discharge of oil or oily mixture into a U.S. harbor, what must he or she do first? The answer is B, call the Coast Guard and the National Response Center. 20, when less than 12 miles from the shore, the oil discharge mixture content B must be less than 15 parts per million. This is when less than 12 miles from shore. I think this is the same question, kind of. 21. If you must pump bilges while a vessel is in port, you should pump only A. If discharge is led to a shore tank or barge. Okay. 22. When cleaning up an oil spill in U.S. waters, you must obtain the approval of the federal on-scene coordinator before using C, chemical agents. 23, the use of sinking and dispersing chemical agents for removal of surface oil is D, authorized only with prior approval of the federal on-scene coordinator. 24, which method or methods of oil cleanup are allowed? 
employing a boom, skimmers, sorbents? The answer is D, all of the above. 25, plastic material may be thrown overboard from a vessel, which is D, none of the above. 26, according to Annex 5 to Marpole 7378, garbage containing plastic is permitted to be disposed of by B, incinerating offshore. 27. A vessel to which Annex 5 to Marpole 7378 applies is located within 12 nautical miles from the nearest land. Which type of garbage is prohibited from being discharged? The answer is A. Food waste. So here are the answers to the pollution questions. If you don't have them already, go ahead and pause the video. And we'll move on to the final section, which is stability questions. And I think there's even a, uh, there is a diagram for this. So here's the diagram. And here are the questions, stability questions. Okay. Number one, the low line mark on a vessel should be used is used to c determine the vessel's draft the load line number two one function function of a bulwark is to a help keep the deck dry number three the principal danger from ice collecting on the upper works is the C, loss of stability. Number four, if a vessel rolls slowly and sluggishly in a seaway, this condition indicates that the vessel A has poor stability. Five, referring to diagram 1SA, this one, Which of the following represents the center of gravity? Which of the following represents the center of gravity? The answer is D, which on the diagram here is the letter G. Okay. Refer referring to diagram D001SA, which of the following represents metacentric height metacentric height the answer is b g m so this line right here g m meta metacentric height is dotted okay number seven refer to diagram d001 sa which of the following represents the writing arm the writing arm the answer is b G Z. That is the writing arm right there. G Z. Number eight. If G of a ship rises 1.7 feet, the G Z for the various angles of inclination will. If G rises 1.7 feet, the G Z for the various angles of inclination will A, decrease. Nine, in addition of weight to a position above the vessel's center of gravity, will B, decrease the writing moments. Will decrease the writing moments. Uh, let's see. Ten, if G moves above M, what will happen to a vessel if G moves above M? The answer is the vessel will capsize. Too top heavy. 11, which statement is true of a stiff vessel? 
Answer is A, she will have a large metacentric height. She will have a large metacentric height. 12, which of the following is true of a stiff vessel? Of those, uh, the answer is D, her period of roll is short. 13, which statement is true of a tender ship? Answer is B, her period of roll is long. Number 14, stability of a vessel may be improved by removing loose water, adding weight low in the vessel, closing crossover valves between fuel tanks. The answer is D, any of the above. 15, when weight is shifted from the lower hold to the main deck, the answer is A, the center of gravity will move upwards. This could have a negative effect. 16, the distance between the water line of a vessel and the main deck is called, the answer is B, freeboard. Water line to the deck, water line to the deck. That's freeboard. Buoyancy is a measure of a ship's, A, ability to float. 18, what is meant when the vessel is trimmed by the bow? The answer is D. She has more draft forward than normal. 19. You are reading the forward draft marks in illustration D32DG. You are reading the forward draft marks in the illustration D32DG, and you observe that the water level is four inches from the top of the line number 11. Four inches from the top of the line of number 11. So four inches is four inches down this way, okay? What is the draft? The answer is 11 feet, two inches. Four inches from the top of 11, what is the draft? The answer is C, 11 feet, 2 inches. 20. What is the downward curvature of the deck that allows water to flow outward to the waterways called? The answer is D, camber. 21. The beam of a vessel refers to the A, greatest width of the vessel. Be an easy one for you. 22. Holds the holes in the bulwark which allow deck water to drain into the sea are C. Freeing ports. Called freeing ports. 23. A vessel's quarter is the section that is B on either side of the stern. 24, if your vessel is aground at the bow, it would be preferable that any weight removal be from made from the A, bow. 25, when reading the draft marks in diagram 32 DG, you note that the water level is about four inches below the bottom of number 11. What is the draft? four inches below number 11, below the bottom of number 11. It's below the bottom of the line number. This other question said four inches below the top of number 11. So this is four inches below the bottom of number 11. The answer is A, 10 feet, eight inches. So 26, when reading the draft marks in the diagram D32DG, you note that the water level is about two inches below the top of number 10. What is the draft? The answer is C, 10 inches, 
uh, 10 feet, 4 inches. C, 10 feet, 4 inches. Number 27, where would you find the draft marks on a ship? Where would you find these draft marks on a ship? The answer is D, near the stern, stem and the stern. The answer is D, near the stem and the stern. 28, you are reading draft marks on a vessel and you observe that the water level is at the top of the number five. What is the draft of the vessel? The answer is D, five feet, six inches. And that is the end of the deck general test uh, study guide questions. Here are the answers for stability answer for the stability questions. Feel free to pause your uh, video to the answers. And thank you very much. This has been the deck general. Uh, this has been the deck general class for the U.S. Coast Guard 100-ton captain's license study guide uh, for the deck general exam. And please feel free to contact me if you would like the exam without the answers so that you can act like you're taking the test. I would highly recommend it. Again, I think there's 150 questions on this exam and you're allowed to miss at least 30, I believe. So it is an easier exam. Don't, uh, if there's one exam you should be studying, it's the rules of the road. Go master the rules of the road, okay? Um, but have a great day and join me on the very final one, which is going to be sailing auxiliary and towing assistance. So um, have a great day. Thank you.